I want to get into this story that should be mainstream news and is not. Here's the article. I'm going to post this in the live stream right here. Okay. So you can see 18 minutes of trading chaos that broke the nickel market. You know, this happened on March 13th. I didn't find out about this till yesterday. So I'm a month behind on this story because it was nowhere. It was absolutely nowhere. But you can see when the commodities price went vertical last week, the metals industry plunged into turmoil not seen since the 10 crisis. All right, that's the headline of everything. I'm going to give you guys the basic rundown. So, because of the whole Russia thing, Russia, I believe, is one of the larger exporters of nickel, which nickel is used in all types of things, especially uh, EV, just like silver is. But why this happened is not because of the Russian thing, but because of a Chinese tycoon named Zing Guangda, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. <clears throat> he owns Tingxing Holding Group. They are a very big nickel company. And he went short because of the Russian thing going on and everything like that. And he owns like quite a bit of the supply of the world's nickel himself. He went short because they ramped up production of, sil of nickel. He thought that he was going to be able to hold the nickel prices down and cut out all of his competition. He also got with JP Morgan, surprise, surprise, which is Chase, and a few other banks. Now, the problem was, or is, you know, partly inflation, but nickel ran from 50K to 100K. It was up. 240 percent so when i say this guy was short on nickel i'm not talking about like he had 100k or a million he had billions billions of dollars short against nickel and that caused this short squeeze as we have inflation and the russian thing well here's the part that should be in every piece of mainstream news and it's not instead of letting everything go the lme the exchange that he was shorting on decided to roll back three something billion dollars in trades from the day when the when the day after the original nickel squeeze you know the nickel squeeze happened too fast there was nothing they could do about it but somehow some way they decided that they can just roll back all that money and all those trades. Unprecedented, unheard of, absolute nonsense. Okay, the LME is a London exchange. It's not a Chinese exchange where they can do what they want. This was a London exchange. This should have never happened. That is not free market. This jackhole who owns a whole bunch of nickel should have ate his losses that's what the market is for that is what shorting is actually for is to keep jackholes like this who try to monopolize a whole industry from monopolizing it right so he should have been squeezed out he didn't squeeze out because they reversed all the things reversed all the trade he went more he is still short so much on nickel right now jp morgan chase as well backing this guy this this is not good for anything except for the people who saw the nickel short squeeze coming so that was nickel and i want to show you real quick yeah like i said read that article and i'll tell you all of that i'm gonna pull up trading view and i'm gonna show you on these charts so like this all has happened in the last month you know nobody's talking about it the, literally the craziest nickel short squeeze or any short squeeze, um, followed by unprecedented exchange, pretty much, I mean, I, a dictatorship, I guess? What, I mean, what do you call it when a whole exchange reverses every single trade to save some Chinese tycoons? But, and then the, the Chinese tycoon is still, still going short on this, so he, he's probably going to get what he's got coming to him. But anyway, let me get over here to these precious metals. Because I want to show you, it's not just nickel that went crazy. Palladium 
just had a big shoot up yesterday, 200 something dollars. And now you can see it's even continued today up to 25, 40, starting to go bullish. The metals market, just all the metals in general, are getting a lot of attention because of these short squeezes that's happening. And if you've been following and, and heard me talk about silver and how that they've been using the futures the same way that Jing is trying to use the futures to short and hold the prices of nickel down is the same way that all the major silver companies use the futures to hold silver down. Now the question is, would the NASDAQ or the CME here in America shut down and reverse a bunch of trades if a major company like Chase was short against silver and silver started squeezing like that. Then you see on nickel right here, you can really see this the rip really nice on this future contract. But you can see where it just went ballistic at the beginning of March. It was down at 1900 a contract, shot all the way up to 6000 a contract. Will they will they shut it down? I think they will because in, during the COVID dip, they shut down the market twice. You know, nickel having a huge spike. Copper just had a huge spike in March as well, running way up there. Now with palladium starting to go, the only things that are underbought are platinum, silver, and gold is starting already to try to test that 2000 again. It's holding 1950. If it continues to hold, 2000 is the top. We break 2000 again. So if you haven't read this article, I highly recommend you read it. What this article is going to teach you is what I've been saying about these institutions competing against each other, which there was other institutions, of course, who saw what Singh was doing and uh, went against him. So this is, this is how the stock market actually works. This is the nonsense. This is the BS. We're little fish in a big old shark pool. And these sharks, you know, they're out here trying to monopolize more and more by using futures contracts to keep prices down. However, they're not incorporating the mass amounts of, of inflation. So. This is war with the enemy. Think that it was meant to be living in a time where the 